And? Rose, I'd like you to meet Ralph Mason. He's chief of security here at General Hospital. It's nice to meet you. We're glad to see the police on duty outside your husband's room. Yes, it makes me feel much more secure to know they're there. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'd like to get back up to my husband. It's nice to meet you, Mr. Mason. You too, Mrs. Kelly. Take care of yourself, Jesse. I'll see you later. Hey, Rose. Sit down, Ralph. Thanks. How are you today, Jesse? Just fine, thanks, Ralph. Look, uh, excuse me, but there's something I've got to talk about. It's been bothering me a lot lately. What's wrong, Dan? Well, all this violence we've been experiencing here lately in Port Charles. I'm asking Steve to beef up the security all through the hospital and in the parking lot, too. Which means it'll fall to you, Ralph, to enforce it. I understand you wanted to talk to me, Bobby. Yes, I do. Would you cover for me for a little while? I just want to take a short break. How's your dad feeling? Oh, they say he's getting worse, Bobby, and I don't like it. As a matter of fact, I'm worried sick about him. Rose told me you might still be in trouble. Oh, that's just because she's been talking to Ramsey again. I've just heard from Ramsey, and I've gotten some pretty good news from him. What? A man was found dead in a small town south of here called Beecher's Corner. They said he was a knife man. He might be the guy that stabbed my father. You're kidding. What happened to him? Oh, he was shot. They found him in a cornfield. They don't know who did it. They're going to send down a wire photo, and maybe my dad can identify him. Well, Joe, that's fantastic. Have they had any news about Luke and Laura yet? No, I'm sorry they haven't, Bobby. It's, it's almost as if Luke and Laura had dropped totally out of sight. Well, so okay. So what makes you think that your good news is good news to me? Well, I thought you'd be glad about it. All that means to me, Joe, is that these dreams that I keep having about Luke could come true. Well, I don't know what kind of dreams you've been having, Well, don't but... even ask about it because they're nightmares. But I do know that I can't depend on the police to do something about finding Luke and Laura anymore. We have to do something ourselves, Joe. And what exactly do you suggest that we do? I don't know. Anything. Something. Break into Frank Smith's house if we have to. Jennifer is someplace, okay? So maybe there's an address. There has to be an address in there somewhere. No, not necessarily. It's worth a try, Joe. No, it's not. Because if Smith or any of his men catch you in there, you're dead. Joe, I have a feeling that something is going to happen, and my feelings are all bad. It's just your imagination running away with you. All right, look, we can try, we can do this, we could do the whole thing on the up and up, okay? Now, listen, a wedding present was delivered to Luke's apartment from Chicago. Chicago? And, yeah, well, I don't know, don't ask me, but he's received several others, too. So that could be the excuse. I can say that I had to return them to Jennifer so that she could return them. There's no way in the world I'm going to let you do anything as crazy as that. Well, okay. You can come with me. But either way, I'm going. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why are you being so stubborn about this? I'm not being stubborn, Joe. I have a hunch, okay? I have to help my brother. Now, do you have a better idea? Mr. Kelly? Yes. Captain Ramsey asked me to deliver these to you. They're the wire photo mug shots for your father to identify. Oh, thank you. I'll take these into him and see if my father can identify him for you. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't like all those policemen out there. I tell you, you know, I feel more like a prisoner than I do. I do like somebody that's being protected. Well, they may not be there that much longer. I got a phone call today from Captain Ramsey, and he thinks that the man who tried to kill you is dead. So if he's right, We'll have a lot less to worry about now, won't we? Oh, Rosie. Oh, Rosie is such an optimist. Well, I believe in positive thinking. Oh, I, I don't mean it's... It's bad not to look on the bright side. No, I'm, I'm not criticizing you. It's just... It don't do as much good here, you know. Why? What do you mean? Rosie... If the man is, is really dead, then all it means is he got killed because he failed to do his job. The job of killing Joe. No, no. I kill one, I send another. 
We're not on safe ground yet. You would have to think of it that way, wouldn't you? That's the way it is. Are you still awake? What do you mean, still? It's a shake of the morning. Oh, I've been getting up at 6 a.m. my life. Yeah. Come on. I'm going to stop now. Well, I just, for some crazy reason, thought you might be wild and frivolous and, you know, sleep, rest, do something that the doctors like for a change. Step enough. Pull up a chair and make yourself comfortable. Oh, thank you, sir. Possible. <laughs> I thought, since you were awake, that you might not mind uh, taking a look at something for me. What is it? Just a couple of photos that Ramsey sent over. More mug shots. A couple, yeah. You do me a favor. If he brings any more, will you tell him to put some pictures of some pretty girls in it? Break up the monotony. Well, no problem, man. We've got a couple of fold-outs from girly magazines, and we just have a wonderful time. In the meantime, how about uh, gazing at these? Oh. Oh, he's beautiful. You recognize him? Hello, my friend. That's a fella. That's a fella that you me. Are you positive? I'm uh, afraid of right, yeah. As sure as I'm laying here, I know it. What's his name? Vic Gower. Think of people like that. You know, having names. I'm being like real people, do you? You know, what a wife or kids. How well, if he had anything like that before, he doesn't now. He was found dead in a little hick town called Beecher's Corners.